Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to show you how you can use the conceptual website template to create a website design for yourself or a colleague. So clicking on this option to create a template version and then I'll build it up. So what you get on the stencils is you've got quick shapes, website map shapes, so you can go into great detail using these little shapes and these ones, which is the ones I'm going to focus on for this little session. So first of all, you've got home. So I'm going to create a home option. So I'll click, bring that onto the screen, just make my screen a little bit bigger. So there's the home symbol. And then when you hover over that, you get some options here. And I want some groups, page groups. So that's the option I want there, page group. And now I'll keep clicking onto this one because I want more than one page group. So if I come out of this one, I'll get page group, but I want it to be over here and I want it to line up. And then I'll go up the top, pick another one, and then just get it to line up and then keep doing that. So I want five altogether and I can just move these into position. You can see the little markers coming out there. And there's my fifth one. And I'll just sit that up the top there, like so. So now we've got the, the, the actual home page in the middle. So these are the sort of headlines, if you like. So I'll just name these. I'll just click on it and, and type. First one can be courses. Second one can be about, about the company. And then you've got bookings. I want a bookings group. And then you've got history, which is similar to about, but could be just history. And then location directions to the training rooms. So under courses, what I need to do is talk about the different methods of delivery. So what I want there is just a page. Um, so you've got group and then that one page is what I want. So I want online, so online courses. Then on that one, I want another page, which will be classroom. So classroom based courses. And then the last one in this little example is going to be virtual. So that's like a Teams session. There's all the different types of courses. Now, obviously, with these other little symbols here, you can have off page reference to different pages and have it, all these showing detail of what's in that web page. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it on the sort of like headline information. So, about you might have some history about customers. So let's just do customers and coming out of that one, um, follow up. So what happens after the course on bookings? Now, this is where you, I would put all the pages for each type of course. So Excel, for example, and then word project. I'm going to do one more, but obviously every course. I do, I would want a page for that. So under history, I'm just going to put one little page, UK, UK, and then location, I will have a map. So Google Maps or something like that. So that's the, the basic structure. Now, um, this last one I did there, I didn't want to do that. I want to get rid of that one. What I'll put there is a each one of these would link to a form maybe. So you've got a form symbol there. Now, if I click on the connected tool, that will allow me to put the form on there. So that would be a form. So I'll probably need a form coming onto each one of these. So if I do the same thing coming down, just a little form underneath each of these, make sure you click on it so it's active. And then the connected tool will give you the right link, which that wasn't. Bring that back across. So it's snapping to that. I don't want it to snap to that. Let's just knock that off and move it over. So if it's not snapping to the to the right thing, there we go. Now we'll get rid of that connector and just do it manually. So it should have snapped to that, but it didn't. Now it has. And I would want one for project as well. I've already got that one there, haven't I? So I can just move that one around. So each one of those have got like a booking form. So just move that over. So it lines up with these, put the pointer tool back on, 
happy teddy bear with that. So that's how that structure is going to work. Now, if you wanted to do a hyperlink to any of these, if you click on to any of these to actually hyperlink to a, a, a different web page, or it could be the map Google, you can just click on this and just go up to the insert tab and select link. And then it gives you the option to put a link in there. So that's a, a link to the word training course on my existing website. So if I click OK to that, when you move across it, you get the, the link symbol. If you hold the control key down, you get the hand. So when you click on that, it should open up the, the web page. And it does. I'll just bring it across there, make it full screen. So that's the word training web page that I just hyperlinked to. So that's creating a link. Now I do want some background on this. So if I go to design, I can click background and the world gives myself a background page. That's how it works. I also want borders and titles. Uh, go for that one. Now you can't click on this screen, this page, because that is also a background. So I go onto this page with the world as the background. The title is also sitting there, so I can just type it in. It's easy training for example as a title that's on the background and then page one I can bring that back in like so now when you click on these shapes you haven't got any shape data as default if I go on to data and then just tick the, the shape data window there is no information sitting in the back of these shapes which is quite unusual but that means that you can um, put whatever you want. I never put outline in there. I don't know why. What I did. So if I click onto that one, I can right click, go into data and then define shape data and then the world's my oyster. I can actually just put whatever I want in there. So I'll just do one new property. So online. So I'll just go for let's go for duration. And there it is. And I'll do another one actually, duration and system. So this is going to tell you how long the course is and then you've got system. I've just done it on that one. Um, I just click OK and then you get that information up there where you can fill in. So I'll just say four hours, for example, and the system that would be used would be teams. So you've got that information on that shape and you'd have to do it on the others. Now the way to do that so you don't have to keep repeating yourself, is to create your own stencil. Do it on one, and then move that shape into your stencil. So if I just go and open a stencil that I've already done, open stencil, I'll just pick a random one, you'll get the idea, organisation shapes. This will open a stencil uh, of shapes that I've created, so we've got a couple there. Now, what you would do, if I wanted all these page pages to have the same information on you do it once put it onto this stencil rename it make sure you don't call it page because that'll just default back to nothing rename it and then every time you drag it on it will have the the new shape data and so if i just do that on this one so i'll just drag that over there okay yeah it's called master so i'll call it my page away so if I bring that back on it'll connect back up but if I bring another one back on it's got the same shape data so before I did that I should have cleared this off so that's how you would save yourself lots of time so you basically got to think of that before you start the whole process just get rid of that so that will save you time and that's all I want to talk about in this little video how to create a conceptual web page using Microsoft Visio. So hopefully this little video has been of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.